Why do I encourage people to retire? I get snarky comments every now and again, like, eh, retirement, meh, 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 meh. work, 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 work. And I, like, it's, it's all good. I can't retire. I don't got enough money. You know what I'm saying? I'm 53 years old. I don't got the assets. But I think many of you are. You do have enough money. I think many of you could be voluntarily employed if you just knew, if you just knew it. But you don't know it because you've been hearing so much of the fear mongering and the idiocy out there. It's like, oh, you can't retire. It's a retirement crisis. And the issue is a lot of you guys are, are making yourself sick by working in your crappy old job. And it's leading you to a worse life than you should have because God wants you to be happy. I say my website, the very front page, Ecclesiastes. You know, we want to be happy, be joyful in this life. And Solomon, King Solomon had written that. It's in the good book, man. And if loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right. But I think many of you are voluntarily employed. You just don't know it. You said, I, I don't need to be employed now. You can be if you want. I have to be employed because I don't have enough money to pay my bills if I don't have a job. But I was talking to these guys today, just a matter of fact. Wife has said, hang it up, man. Hang it up. She was like, I can. Absolutely. Times, times now. You know that he's 61, I think, and he, she was 60, something like that. I can't remember. Early 60s. And, uh, you know, they both lost like 30 to 40 pounds since he retired last year or something like that. You know, they're getting better shape. They got grandkids running around and stuff. Just freaking crushing. Man, anyway, so I want to show you this chart I, I posted on my uh, my YouTube channel, on my community tab. I posted on it because I'm on Twitter now, on my Facebook channel, and LinkedIn. And you should follow all those, by the way. Oh, speaking of following, how many of you are not subscribed? Hit the subscribe button down there, man. Top of the morning to you, First Sergeant, with this Waterloo Raspberry Nectarine. Pretty good. Take a moment. Take that little finger right there and go hit that red thing that says subscribe. Why would you not do it? It takes two seconds. It doesn't cost anything. All right. Anyway, so I got this chart right here. And I got it from Bill Sharp's book uh, right here, Retirement Income Analysis. Bill Sharp, William Sharp, from the Sharp ratio in terms of risk reward, that number. I think did he win a Nobel Prize in economics or something? I can't remember. It's seven hundred thirty pages. Um, it's good. Lots of good stuff in here, and I'm very uh, fond of the book. And I got that from his uh, longevity portion. Portion. Right now, I'm looking at portfolio. So let me go back to where I was. But anyway, so I just posted. I just copied and pasted. Posted up here. It's free. You can download it. Just look up Bill Sharp retirement income analysis. So here we got the Smiths. We got, uh, we'll say Bill and Sue. And I just said, you're just minding your own business, thinking about retirement and worried sick that you're going to run out of money. It's a retirement crisis, you're told, over and over and over again. You better work a few more years, right? Well, look at this chart. The probability that both you and Sue will be alive, both you guys will be alive in 20 years is less than 40%. And I think they were 65 years old, if memory serves. So here's, we're going to, here we go. For 20 years, right there. Should we put that up a little bit? Right there. Less than 40% probability that both of us will be alive. The red is for you, Bob, and the yellow and the green, the blue is for Sue. So you're you're married to your spouse. You man, I want to do things with my wife. You know, we've been we've raised kids, we've been working, we've been doing all this. I want to take my wife or my husband, whatever. I want to hang out. I got clients out catamarans. They want to live part-time in New England and part-time in Virgin Islands. I want to do something more than just what I'm doing at my job. And my job may or may not be a crappy old job, but my job doesn't make bring me satisfaction anymore. And life's too short. I say, okay, let's say you're 65. I say, all right, you're 65 years old. There's a high probability, high probability, 60% or more, that one of you guys won't be around, Sue and Bill, yeah, Sue and Bill won't be around in 20 years. You say, ah, that's a risk I'm willing to take. I'm going to work another five years just to make sure we don't run out of money. You're like, okay, you keep doing that, and you're going to work into your 20 years you have left. You're basically going to consume 25% of that time in order to work longer. Uh, just because you want to avoid this retirement crisis, when in fact you could be voluntarily employed. You just might not know because you're ignorant. Ignorant just means you don't know. doesn't mean you're stupid. just means you don't know. You haven't run the numbers. And I'm not going to tell people they're voluntarily employed if they're not. If they need to work, I'm going to tell them they work. I, tons of people I talk to say, you got to still work a couple more years all the time. 
But how would you know unless you crunch the numbers? If you just listen to some idiots, 4% rule and all that, you're just, you're not, you're not hearing the, the true facts. You're just not. Anyway, so I'm sitting there. Okay, so you want to spend in the primo time, 65 to 70 or 60 to 65. The primo times where you got your health and your mind. You want to spend the primo times working for another guy that doesn't make you happy. In fact, if anything, it hurts you. Because you're adding weight, you're adding stress, you got the commute, you're on the road, which is dangerous in of itself. That, does that make any sense? Well, the, the life expectancy is 88. Uh, uh, life expectancy, that means a significant amount of people die before they hit that life expectancy. It's not quite an average, it's like a median. 50% of the people survive, 50% of the people die first. But we can see right, and I'm just saying life expectancy is 88. I'm just throwing that up there. But we can see right here, even if you survived, like Sue here, you know, Sue's got a, let's see here. Oh, this is Bob. Bob's got a 55% chance of living for 20 years. Sue's got a 90% chance of living for 20 years. Even if you guys were to survive, even if you were to survive, Bob, what's the likelihood Sue will be there to survive with you? Is it high? Do you know? If it's not high, then do you really care that you're 70 or 82 years old, you're still living, but now Sue's gone? So let me give you an example. It's hit me like a ton of bricks. I had this client, we'll call her Nina, and uh, a friend of the family's actually. In fact, uh, we, I sold one of my cars to her. And uh, she had a great dog, I'll never forget. And uh, I was familiar with her husband, her, and, and, uh, and Nina back in Virginia. And she was a, a registered nurse. And um, anyway, long story short, her and her husband, um, and she was late 50s, something like that. This is about 20, yeah, 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago, I was working with her. I said, why are you still doing this? She goes, I need to. I can't retire. I said, you do? I can't remember. I just don't remember the whole specifics. I said, I don't think so. Let's, let's crunch some numbers. And we crunched the numbers and said, you can leave whenever you want. You're voluntarily employed. She goes, really? I said, I think she was 58. Her husband's 67, if memory serves, or 65. Said, yeah. She goes, oh, really? I she going to believe it. Stayed on board another year. And then I said, Nina, just leave. Man. She's miserable. And she had she dealt with like older people. She had to move them. And she's a petite lady. And just is you know, taxing on her body. Anyway, so she retired, and they took a trip. Uh, they got on a, uh, one of those Viking tour things to go to Germany. I think he was from, you know, his heritage is German or something like that. I can't remember. I think it was German. And they got to go on these boats, those ships, whatever the hell they're called, and go to Germany and, and scope around. Anyway, the next year, or maybe a year later, I can't remember, uh, he died. on Is it Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve? I think it was Christmas Eve. He was in the greatest shape, but he wasn't, she didn't think he was, you know, deathly ill, but he had a uh, an aneurysm, if memory serves, or a heart attack, I, something like that. I can't remember. Again, this is the early, the mid two thousands, and I, I just as sad. I said, oh, "Man, I'm sorry to hear that, Nina." She goes, "You know, but I tell you, Josh, I'm so glad we got to spend time together, going to our Viking cruise that we had this, that time together. That that makes me so happy. I would have been so devastated if we did not have that time together." Because she could have kept working, kept working, kept working. And I, yes, I, I'm the one who said, no, you can, you don't have to do this. You can hang up the boots. And, you know, I didn't know they're so keen on doing the Viking tour. I said, but you are voluntarily employed. If you have something you want to be doing, I'm assuming that her numbers are correct. And they, you know, in this case, they were, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't remember the financials. I said, no, we crunched the numbers. I said, You're, you don't have to keep doing this, Nina. Anyway, so I haven't spoken to her in many years, but. I'll never forget that, man. And it just made me so happy to recognize, not that I was able to convince her to retire or to tell her she's voluntarily employed, but that she had she could spend time with her husband before he died. And um, that's why. Because what if you died or he died or you died? And you know what I'm saying? Just a missed opportunity. And the missed opportunity is for what exactly? What? To have another $100,000 in your portfolio? Do you even need it? And you might. But do you know? That's why I'm so passionate about this. Because I want you to enjoy. God put you on this earth for enjoyment. To glorify God and be happy. And if you're going to work, you're putting on pounds, your blood pressure's getting high, you're angry all the time, you can't smile, that's, that's not being happy. No. Love your thoughts. God bless. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.